The following is a presentation of Nachi Creek Baptist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. For more information, please visit nachicreekbaptist.org. God is good. Amen. Take your Bibles and let's go to the first book in the Word of God. I told you to fill these paperwork out here. Give them back to me and uh, just uh, put them in my box out there if you would on the volunteer. I'd be glad to get that to the associational office. We'll have that data for us to draw from. Are you at Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3. We want to talk to you this morning about grace. Grace. And there's many, many descriptions of grace. And uh, I want to point out one of the first places I recognize grace. And I understand in Genesis 1.1 it says, In the beginning, God. And that is the founder of grace. That is the one that established grace. God is a gracious God. And the Bible tells us, uh, as man, uh, God created all things and then the Bible tells us that uh, God made man and then he made woman, told them not to partake of the tree of good and knowledge. And they partook of it and uh, the Bible tells us that sin entered in. And uh, so the third chapter, we're finishing that and because of their sin, woman has um, the child birth on her, and then man has the earning of the, uh, the living by the sweat of his brow. And then the Word of God tells us some things that happened in the latter part of the third chapter. And you may not see this as grace, but I do. Genesis chapter 3, when you get there, say amen. Verse 20, and Adam called his wife now Eve. And this is what Eve's name uh, means. Because she was the mother of all living. Eve means that. And Adam also, <clears throat> and to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skin and he clothed them. This is a picture of grace. The first sacrifice for sin was God had to slay an animal and clothe man. A picture of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Death on the cross that we might be clothed in his righteousness. Then he moves on. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Now who was there with God? Anybody know? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit was there in attendance. And the Bible says man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now least he put forth his hand and trake of the tree of life and to eat and to what? Live forever. A beautiful picture of grace. Why? Because the Bible says in verse 23, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, so to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, what does that picture grace to me? Well, it pictures grace to me simply because it is. First of all, God is truth. Amen? I believe that God is true this morning. Everything God says comes to pass. And he had told Adam and Eve that as soon as they would eat of this true they, tree, they would surely die. So what if God had left them in the garden? The Bible says they would have eaten from the tree of life. 
and they would have lived in sin for eternity. So the Bible, uh, first of all, it tells us that God's true. What do you mean? Well, it, God said, when you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. So he drove them out to what? To die. And number two is uh, that uh, man would not have to live in this old world, live in the tree or in the garden. He would not have lived for eternity in sin. I'm grateful there's going to be something greater than this old sinful life, aren't you? I'm grateful that God has prepared for those that love him. I'm grateful that God uh, has given us something better in this world to look forward to. You say, preacher, uh, why don't you just live here now? Well, I am living here now. But I've got good news for you. I've got something better coming. And I want to talk to you about grace today. If you've got a church hymnal, I want you to pick it up, and I want you to turn to page 57. And uh, I want to share uh, from the songbook, and the song is called Amazing Grace. And I want to show you four things, one thing from each verse uh, that speaks to my heart about the grace of God. And I title this, uh, The Sweet Sound of Grace. What is grace? Well... As I said many times, many people have definitions. You break the word grace down, and it means God's riches at Christ's expense. Now, that's a wonderful definition of grace. Some folks call it, the dictionary calls it unmerited favor or undeserving favor. And folks, that's a wonderful description of grace. But I, I just want to talk to you about the sweet sound of grace and how that it sounds to me and what God uh, has given us through his wonderful grace. I find that the Bible tells us uh, in uh, uh, this song that uh, John Newton wrote, the Bible tells us there, there was originally six or seven verses. The copy that we have in our church hymnal uh, is uh, just four verses, and uh, uh, you'll say, well, preacher, I'm glad they're just four verses because if you're going to preach every verse, the sermon will be a lot longer. Well, let's just do four verses, and I'll get you out pretty early today. Okay, the first thing is I find uh, in verse number one, it talks about amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am what? Found, was blind, but now I see. The sweet sound of grace. Uh, it talks about the amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, the sweetest sound that man has ever heard is the voice of God. A saying to us, as he said uh, to that lame man in Mark chapter 2, Verse number 5, he says, Thy son, uh, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Do you remember when God saved you? <laughs> Do you remember when God forgave you of your sins? I remember, I, I just happened to glance there and saw Lillian. Every time I see Lillian, I think about Show Creek Baptist Church. When I was a little boy, I, I would go with some of my neighbors, and we'd go down to Show Creek and Revival. And we go to New Providence. We go to Mount Harmony. And I was talking to some of the uh, ladies, uh, I think, yesterday or last night. We had that meal at Allison's Catfish. And, uh, folks, we had a wonderful time. And, and I was talking to some of them. And, and uh, we were talking about how that in our past, in years past, that Nunchy Creek used to have a church that had no air conditioning in it. Amen. Uh, it used to be a church with uh, hard pews and hard preaching, amen? Now, uh, it used to be a hot place that you'd come in August, two weeks, revival it. And, folks, it was a hot place. But I want you to know, folks, there was some sweet sounds of grace come from the pulpit. 
Uh, they were sweet ground, sounds of grace coming from the choir. Uh, they were singing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And on the soft pews and on the soft chairs, we, I don't know even know why we got chairs in the choir anyway. We wasted our money. We should have just put uh, uh, some kind of uh, something to hold our books because we always stand and sing anyway. But I, I think about how that Dutchie Creek still singing the sweet sound of grace. Hey, folks, what is it? It is that Jesus still saves. Amen. And the Bible says here that the writer John Newton, he got a vision from God. God gave him a message, and he began to write it down. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like I. I want you to know, church, I, I, I thought about it this week, and as I'm thinking about and praying about the grace of God, I am soon will be turning 64 year old. I've been born uh, again some 50 years, and I just want you to know, church, I, I never get tired of thinking about when God saved me. I never will get over that feeling that God put in my heart the night I repented of my sins uh, and called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want you to know, church, uh, there's something about being saved by the grace of God. You say, well, preacher, I was raised in religion. Well, I was too. My grandfather was a preacher, and my dad uh, took him to church. That's the way I learned to drive, church. Uh, uh, my grandfather had faith uh, beyond any of us. Uh, my children will tell you uh, that, folks, uh, there's times when they were learning to drive that their daddy, hey, listen, mom sometimes does that, but, I, but I've been the one to teach our kids how to drive. And I'm telling you, sometimes, church, they've scared the devil out of me. I'm telling you, folks, uh, he got it a time. Uh, it got tough. Uh, but I, I thought about how that, uh, folks, whenever, uh, when I was learning to drive my grandfather, I drove an old Dodge 50 model uh, Dodge truck, uh, uh, three uh, uh, gears uh, on the column. I'd shift that thing, and my older brother learned to drive. My other brother learned to drive. Here it come my turn to drive. And I don't know how my grandfather, uh, folks, put up with it, but I believe the reason he preached so straight and so hard is we had him right before we got him there. Because he's teaching us to drive. If you don't believe that, get in a, a car with your grandkids. Try to teach your kids how to drive. I'm telling you, every time something, you're just stiffening up. Uh, you're almost saying something, and sometimes you do. Uh, sometimes I respond, Lindsay, quit that. You know better than that. Tally, don't do that way. And I just thought about how that God saved us. Hey, folks, I never have got over that. I never got over the experience of grace in my soul. Uh, folks, it's still sweet when I think about getting on that pew, uh, bowing before God, uh, and asking God to save an old wretched sinner like I. You say, preacher, I've been raised in religion. I was raised to respect God. I was too, but they come a time I become guilty before God, and I realized I was a sinner, and I needed to be saved, uh, and condemnation come on me, and I realized that without Jesus, Jesus, I was going to hell. A conviction brought upon my soul a fear of going to hell. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, and when I got afraid to go to hell, how did I begin to search my heart and try to figure out a way how to get God to forgive me? I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, I learned how to do it. And that was just get on my face and confess my sins before God. And the Bible says, for by grace are you saved too. Faith is not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Word of God tells us that when old Peter, Matthew chapter 14, whenever he was walking on the water, guess what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus, and the Word of God says in that 14th chapter, verses 13 through 19, along down in those verses when Peter began to sink, what did he do? He said, Lord, I'm a member of Nachi Creek. Did he say that? 
No, he didn't say that. He said, I'm a member at First Baptist Church, Jerusalem. No, he said, I've been with you three years. I forsook it all. I had a business. Me and uh, uh, my brother, we had a, a business, and, and there we were, Andrew. We were uh, fishing, and everything was wonderful. And, Lord, we uh, had all these things, and, and we forsook it all. No, he said, Lord, save me. I'm a lost. I, I'm need. I'm sinking. I need you to save me. Listen, church, I still believe that God still hears the prayers of lost people. I still believe people can get saved by the grace of God. I still believe that's the only reason. You say, preacher, now you, you, you're categorizing, you're putting this, this is a pretty strong statement. I still believe that's the only reason God's leaving the church here today. I still believe that's the only reason that believers are here today. Why? Because this world needs to hear the gospel. And this world needs to know that Jesus saves uh, and Jesus gives us uh, this, uh, eternity uh, with him. I want you to know, church, uh, if it wasn't for that, I believe that it already come. God is still uh, shedding his grace upon us. Do we not sing that song about America? How that God has shed his grace upon us. I want you to know, church, he's still shedding his grace upon us. All right, let's go to verse number two. I am in the, the book. This is the church hymn. I believe it's page 57. And it says, "'Twas grace that taught my what? Heart to fear. And it says, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the first, the hour that I first believed. What's that mean? Not only verse number one talks about salvation and being saved, but number two talks about sanctification. You know what God wants you and I to do? He's wanting us to sanctify ourselves. What is sanctification? It's walking in truth. It's knowing right from wrong. It's knowing what God says about sin. It's what God says about a service. It's about what God says about mankind. We're living in a warped age. Can I get an amen there? And I said this Wednesday night. And I'm not being political, but I just want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, on the political stage in America, if you uh, believe uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ and don't believe uh, in abortion or, or if you don't believe uh, uh, in murdering of babies uh, and if you don't believe uh, uh, folks uh, 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 in, in gay marriage uh, and if you don't believe uh, uh, folks in all the things our world today is proclaiming, if you don't stand up and believe that it's a political man, you'll be run out of town. You run on the platform, you don't believe in abortion or gay marriage. If you don't believe in all the things that Washington is putting out, they will laugh you out of the state. I guarantee you, folks, our world needs to set the precedent. Our churches need to have some sanctification in them. We need to stand for truth. We need to stand for what's right. We need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? I'm reading from the Word, John 8, 32. And he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John's Gospel Chapter 17, I believe, verse 17, the Word of God talks about it. He said, sanctify thyself through what? Through what? And he says, the Word is what? Do you know this book right here? Do you believe that it calls for men to come out from among the world and be separate? Do you believe that God tells us as his church um, there's no more thieving and lying and cheating and folks uh, living in adultery and folks uh, killing babies? 
preach all about it this morning. If you don't mind, uh, folks, I believe that when we uh, uh, don't give God the glory, when we don't keep his Sabbath and keep it holy, and when we lie and cheat and murder and thieve and do all the things God's Word tells us not to, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're asking for the judgment of God. Sanctify yourselves. How are you going to do it? Through the truth. Truth. The Bible tells us that let God be truth and every man be a liar. What did he say to Peter? Peter, whom the men say that I, the Son of Man, am. Who is Jesus? What's he stand for? He's truth. He's the true Son of God. The Bible tells us how when you study it, when he asked Peter, whom the men say that I am, and the disciples, they said, thou art to Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, upon this I'll build my church. What was he talking about? Upon himself. He is the truth. And the Bible says he is the life. Uh, I want you to know, church, uh, he said in John 14, 6, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I want you to know, church, this morning, I believe that God's church has mingled itself, uh, folks, and, and submerged itself in the world. But I believe that God is calling us to come forth. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about sanctification. You know what that means? That means to set yourself aside. That means to come ye from a mount of one. What did the songwriter say in, in verse number two? He says, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." What did God do the word? He's taught me to fear him and reverence him. Why? Because, folks, he is the giver of life. Uh, and not only that, folks, uh, but I'll stand and give an account of my life to him someday. I want you to know the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And sometimes we forgot that. The sweet sound of grace. What is it? First of all, it is God saved us. We're saved by grace. Amen. And not only that, but we're sanctified. Well, I tell you, verse 3 is always my favorite. You know why? Every once in a while, I want to sing it to the devil. Amen. Every once in a while, I want to uh, just sing this verse to the devil. Why? Because I, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, it says, for by grace do we come this far. <laughs> I don't know how you made it, but I made it by the grace of God. I don't know how that you've come this far. Hey, folks, I said a while ago, I was born, I saved somewhere uh, some 50 years ago, and I've thought about it all my life, uh, and I've saw the stages of my life, and I've saw where I've come from. And you say, well, preacher, you're not much, but thank God, folks, I might not be much, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. I'm grateful that God changed me. And he says, for by grace you came thus far, and this is for the devil, and by grace I'm a glory. Going on. He brought me thus far safe, then grace will lead me home. <laughs> I've got good news for you, church. God's grace is not only saving grace and sanctifying grace, but God's grace here, it talks about surviving grace. I don't know about you, but folks, I'm surviving. How am I making it? I'm making it by the grace of God. How are you making it? I'm making it by the grace of God. Uh, hey, listen, this world, our government, I mentioned it a while ago, and I don't, uh, I pray for our leaders. I, I love America, uh, but I'm, sometimes I don't love what it's becoming. And folks, it's not all about me, and I don't know everything behind the scenes, or nor do you, but I realize, ladies and gentlemen, how that Jesus said, when you begin to see these things happen, and if they're happening in America, across our world, listen, ladies and gentlemen, he says, uh, listen, lift up your heads. Why? Because your redemption draweth now. Uh, the good news is, church, uh, the darker it is, uh, the greater the hope that Jesus is coming to. He'll come. Oh, it has to get dark. 
It has to get in these positions. It has to get this way. Why? Because God said it would. And the good thing is, folks, I'm saved by God's grace. Uh, the good thing is God sanctifies me and speaks to me and lays on my heart those things that are sin. As the psalmist said, purge me and cleanse me. Wash me whiter than snow. I want you to know, church, it's the grace of God that cleanses me. Uh, and it's the grace of God uh, um, that gives me, uh, folks, the, uh, the power to move from day to day. Hey, folks, the Bible says here that I can still serve God in 2014 uh, uh, why because God is still on the throne amen yeah that just about make me want to shout amen he just makes me get happy I, I thought I'm going to take it easy I got a week's revival coming up I'm going to be wore out by the time next week but I tell you what, folks, if I have to, I'll get in Melvin's reclining chair. Amen. The pastor I'm going to, he's been sick with, uh, he's had cancer, and, and they bought him a recliner to preach out of. Amen. I might get used to that. You might have to give me, somebody asked somebody, they told me the other day, this, somebody said to one of our church members, well, as preacher out at night, has he resigned yet? Said he's getting pretty old, isn't he? <laughs> and this lady said to him, well, he hadn't resigned. Said he's got so much energy, he don't know what to do with it anyway. But if it gets to the point I don't have much, I'll just get in the recliner, amen. I'll just get in there. I've been, Melanie's got me on an exercise program. Can you tell? <laughs> Amen. Can you tell? Yeah. Yeah, I got in front of the mirror yesterday. I thought, man, wow, I think I'll go work out. <laughs> I thought, man, I'm looking so good. I think I'll go run five miles. Then I got over it. Just a few minutes. Yeah. Why? Melanie's making me run. And uh, I took an agreement with her. We run the back roads out there at the house and through McHenry Hills. And there's, we take all Watson Chapel. We walk to the top of the hill. And everybody thinks we're going to walk. So we take off down the other side and we trot. And up there's another McHenry. And we're going like this. And oh, them hills, my tongue gets a hang out. I tried to take a shortcut the other day, and it was longer. She, she was way out in front. The time I come out of that shortcut, she was far here. Marshall Raper's head of me. And I thought, boy, she, and the good thing of it. And our agreement was this. I said, honey, I'll run with you. We hit 68 Highway. We hit 68 Highway. If I'm a half a mile behind you, I've come back and get me. And when we get to 68 Highway, I'm going to have to lead you down 68 Highway. If you have to, I was going to slow trot. You stay behind me because I want everybody to know that I'm still the man of the house. <laughs> She's been doing it. Yeah. She ran all the way down there, ran back and got me, then followed me to the house. What are you talking about? I'm talking about God's grace is sustain. It'll sustain us. And I'm telling you, you get tired in the walk, don't you? As a Christian, I get sick of sin. I get sick of our children being beat up. I get sick of homelessness. I get sick of abuse. I get sick of watching TV. I get sick of how that folks, everywhere you turn, our children and family of folks, divorces and, and of children without parents and, and all these things happen. Listen, we're living in a day of that folks, we need to step up at the plate. Why? because there's people that needs to know that God's grace is still sufficient. Oh, yes. It truly is this morning. By grace I come this far. 
By grace I've made it this far. It's not by who I am and what I've done. It's by simple grace. It's God's wonderful grace. I'm serving Him. Why? Because He gave me that opportunity. I'm going to get verse number 4 in just a minute. But you see, old Peter had a problem. God saved him. Not only that, but then he didn't want to serve him. But God said, now, Peter, when you're converted, you're you're going to serve me. And I want you to know, when you get to John chapter 21, you'll find what Peter said when he was sitting at Jesus, beside of Jesus. He said, Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yeah, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, I love you, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Not you, Creek, do we love Jesus? What about it, teachers? Are you enjoying feeding the sheep? How about it? Are we enjoying feeding the sheep? Oh, Lord, I'm having it so rough. How in the world can I help anybody else? Oh, Lord, I'm just dying. I'm just thinking about quitting. I'm just going to quit, Lord. I'm just, my Lord, what would you do if you did quit? Huh? What would you do if you did quit? You couldn't get away from him. What did the Old Testament writer say? It's if I go out to the depths, he's there. If I go to the heights, he's there. If I go there, he's there. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, some of us just need to lay some things aside and get right with God, sanctify ourselves through God's Word and believe it. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, when we do that, we'll realize that God's grace is still sufficient. Oh, it's still there. That's how we get through this old, that's how I'm surviving, by the grace of God. Oh, preacher, I hear this so often, sometimes I just want to gag. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, if I, if I wanted a gravy train, I'd just be a preacher. I wish you was. Amen. I wished you was in the day we're living in. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And some of you want to tell me how to preach. You sit back there and you think, well, I'll tell him. That preacher's preaching too long. He's preaching too short. Well, folks, you wouldn't be content if I'd done it all. Amen. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, we're in this thing with God. God's wanting us to exalt Him. God, ladies and gentlemen, is bringing us through. Listen, I don't care what you do if you dig a ditch. I don't care if you wait tables. I don't care what you do if you're saved by God's grace and you're one of God's children. You're going to have the attack of Satan. And when he comes, just remember this. When he knocks on your heart's door, send Jesus. Why? Because he's sufficient. How you making, preacher? I'm just making like the Apostle Paul that wrote 14 books in the New Testament. I'm just making it like him. I'm just doing it by the grace of God. I don't care what you do, Satan will attack you. You preach, sing, teach, it don't make any... If you stand for Jesus in any way, you'll have the attack of Satan on you. But we can survive because of the sweet sound of grace. Say, preacher, I'm having it rougher than anybody. I'm telling you, I'm struggling. Everything's happening. I'm just telling you, it just loaded me up. I, I just can't think I can get through this. I just don't know if I can. And I told you I was on an exercise program. And there's a hill on the other side of Watson's Chapel up McHenry Hill. I'm talking about it just like this. And when I start up that thing, I just don't know if I'm going to make it over the top or not. You know how I get to the top? One step at a time. (laughs) 
You say, preacher, how do you make it? I just do it one step at a time. You say, preacher, you act like that you can lose it any time. Without the grace of God, I would. But through him today, I'm more than conquerors. Hey, when I read Romans 8, I read 17 things and life are separate between me and my God. Why? Because he said in verse 37, in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors through him. Oh, the last verse. It sure gets a song. In amazing grace, he says, when we've been there, what? 10,000 years. He says in that part, he says, bright shining as the sun, we're no less days to sing God's praise than when what? We first begun. That's the securing grace of God. Do you know why I'm safe? I'm secure in Christ today. Now, if you don't believe that, if you've got your Bible handy, I'll show you. While they're getting the song, John chapter 10. And it's verse, I'll start with verse 23, the Jews. They said to Jesus, said, why don't you tell us when the kingdom will come? And Jesus said, I've already done it. But you wouldn't believe because of unbelief. Then he starts, I believe, verse 25 as you, he came out on Solomon's port. Go on down, guys. You guys got it going here verse 25 and they Jews came verse 25 and he says and Jesus answered them and told him I ye believe not the works that I did of my father my father's name they bear witness of me now verse 26 he said but ye believe not because you are not my what my sheep and I said unto you verse 27 my sheep shall hear my voice, <laughs> and I shall give unto them eternal life. Why? Because they'll follow me. Yeah, the good shepherd, when he calls, will follow him. And he says in verse number 28, when, when you look at that verse, he said, I give unto them temporary life. No, he said, I got something eternal for you. What did he say in verse 4? When we've been there 10,000 years. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen. I've not met anybody 10,000 year old. Now, I've met a few that look like it. Amen. 10,000 years. When we've been there. They, hey, folks, it's just beginning to get warmed up. The choir had just got uh, in tune. they just kind of getting fired up. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give them to me eternal life. And they shall never, starts with a P. Why? <laughs> I'm secure in Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm about ready to shout. I, I'm secure in Jesus. Why? Because he got big hands. You remember when we as little boys, we sung a song, little girls? He got the whole world in what? In his hands. Where did they get this verse? They got it from John 10, 28. He got the whole world in his hands. Why, my father has got us in his hands. And no man shall pluck them out of my hand. Why, my father which gave them to me, that's God, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Then he, then he ends in verse 30. He says, I and my father, we're one. Hey, folks, I don't know about you, but grace sounds sweet to me. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm secure in my God. This old world, let her rock and roll. Let her do what she wants to. I got good news. I'm secure in Jesus this morning.